You've seen my first guest tonight in True Blood, Magic Mike, and the post credit sequence of Justice League. Please welcome Joe Manganello. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. I had a lovely discussion uh, with your lovely wife. I think I got a photo of the two of you, you two lovebirds back here. Okay, there's you and yeah. your lovely wife, Sofia Vergara, right there. <laughs> you two are, and I mean, in all due respect, weapons grade sexy together. <laughs> to get, together, dangerously so. She says, though, she told me something that takes a little bit of the shine off your sexiness in some circles, not mine. Uh huh, okay. Which is that you are a long time and intense fan of Dungeons and Dragons. Is that true? This is very true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, brother, mm -hmm. brother, let's get into it. Let's okay? do it. Let's do it. All right. Okay. So, uh, uh, when did you start? Like, is this like a recent thing because it's hip to be a nerd now? Or was this back when, when nerd meant something? Oh, uh, I, I'm OG nerd. Okay. Yeah, back when it wasn't cool, uh -huh. I was a little kid. You know, I had the Hobbit picture book with the, it used to chime to tell you to turn the page, and and then from there it was like the gateway drug into like basic Dungeons and Dragons, like the red box with the dragon on the front. Oh, of course, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. But I didn't have anybody to play with. Well, the whole point of Dungeons and Dragons is to have friends to play with, to role play. It's like it's like a. It's like an acting exercise. It, was, it wasn't cool then. It, and it was kind of secret because at the time when I was a kid, there was a whole satanic panic. So everyone was blaming Satan for, you know, the, the kids Same playing thing Dungeons when and I was Dragons. A child. Yeah, yeah, I started playing when I was 13, I think. I started playing when I was 13. And there was a feeling at the time that this was a way, it was, it was as you say, like a gateway drug to, to, to serving our, our Lord Satan. And. <laughs> And we, we're old enough now. We're, we're comfortable enough to admit that that's true, right? We were all... <laughs> it was all a satanic cult, Hydra, right? Hydra cats. Sure, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Hail Hydra. <laughs> 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 so what's, what's the level... What's the, big, the highest level? And this might alienate some audience members here, but I don't care. What is, what is the highest level character you ever had? Highest level is probably the one that I'm playing now. Okay, what, uh, what uh, character class is it? He is, he's a paladin, but he's an oath breaker. So he's broken his oath. He's evil. Okay, a paladin is yeah. a lawful good warrior, essentially. Generally. Generally speaking. Yes. So what's, what's, what's an oath breaker? Is it a lawful evil? Uh, lawful evil. He worships the five headed dragon goddess Tiamat. Sure. Bahamut's yeah. uh, 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 counterpart, obviously. Sure. <laughs> you, don't, you don't come into my house and drop Tiamat. <laughs> I think I'm not going to drop Bahamut at the Man. same time. Okay. Come on. I was just checking. Yeah, okay. Okay, so what, 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 uh, what, uh, what uh, race? Uh, elven, half-elven, orc, human, when, half -elven. When was the last edition that you played? I have not played since college. Okay, all right. So that was uh, five years ago. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm, I play a race that came along in fourth edition. It's called a Dragonborn. So it's like a, it's like a dragon man. It's like half, half dragon, man, half, half dragon. Man. Somewhere man. along the line, How there, does that work? there was some dragon fooling around that went on with a human, <laughs> created a dragon which is a red dragon board, so you get to breathe fire. Wait, you start off being able to breathe fire? That's not fair. It's not very powerful fire. It's kind of like big lighter fire. <laughs> you should come to my house and we should play that game. Well, I would love I to run. because they sent me. Let me take you. a look at these. This my producer gave me a couple of photos when she came out here. What is what is this? This is your this is in your, in your basement right there. What's, what's this that? is this is my this is the Gary Gygax Memorial Dungeon in Beverly Hills, aka my basement. Uh, <laughs> this is your basement. That's my basement. Yeah, it was the only room in the house that we didn't renovate when we moved in, uh, and uh, my wife wanted to turn it into like a Pilates dance studio. And as the wood flooring was about to go in, I started playing Dungeons and Dragons again after a, a long hiatus since pretty much I was a kid. Yeah. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I need this room. <laughs> and I started moving like big dragon heads in and hanging them on the wall. Did you already have these dragon heads or did you go out and get them just to claim the space? I ordered them special. Because you've got, I, uh, these are, this is pretty amazing. Obviously, I don't have to tell the audience that this is a beholder 
Yep. Okay. Hanging from your ceiling. That's beautiful. Where did you get this? Uh, Whiz Kids. Okay. They sent it to me in a giant crate. My wife was stoked. She must have been thrilled to see this head of a mind flayer yep. on your wall. Yes. Looks a lot like Cthulhu, obviously. I think inspired by Obviously, Cthulhu. very Lovecraftian, yes. Sure. Did you get into fantasy literature? Uh, did you read any Michael Moorcock? Oh, sure. Elric of Melnibony? Of course. Well, the of Black, Black Razor was, was just a, a remake of, of Stormbringer. His, okay. His sword. Or yeah, Stormbringer, the counterpart to Stormbringer is Mornblade. Okay. You may be sexier than I am, but I am nerdier than you are. <laughs> I gotta go with my strengths. Yeah. I gotta... <laughs> now tell me, tell me about what is what is death saves? What is this right here? Because you've you've gone yeah. so deep into nerddom that now you're monetizing it. Well, I wanted cool stuff to wear. And when I was a kid, if you played Dungeons and Dragons, you also listened to Metallica, you read Stephen King, you had a glow in the dark Led Zeppelin poster on your wall, you had an Iron Maiden t shirt, you hung out at the arcade, you read comic books, it all went together. So I'm combining them all under one banner again. So I have this heavy metal fantasy themed clothing line, streetwear. Okay. So that there is the Death Safe shirt. So this is fifth edition. On the back, you can see if your character goes to zero hit points, you're going to start rolling for death saves. This gives you all the rules, including meat grinder mode, which is a little rougher. What's meat grinder mode? Meat grinder is when you need to roll uh, 15 or higher to continue living, to stay in stable condition. You roll up. Let's, are we going to get, let's get down. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, let's see. We got. Let's see how much longer this interview is okay. going to go on. So we're, we, we're, we're doing meat grinder right we're now. We're doing meat grinder. We're going straight to meat okay, grinder. So we're gonna. Okay. Before, but before we do meat grinder, what would you do? Because when you do character, when you're coming up with your character, you sure. roll uh, six rolls of, of three six-sided dice to come up with your character attributes. That's generally the 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 addition. There's a new way to do it now, where you roll forty-six and you take away the lowest. Really? Yeah. That's for children. Yeah. Let's do. <laughs> Because why, why would you do you, you do four, four six, and then, and then you, you can take the top where three? you want it to go. So if you want to play a fighter, then you can say, oh, well, this is for strength. That's higher. This one's low. I'm going to dump it over here. What we would do is that if you roll three six-sided dice and none of your attributes were of a superlative nature, 15 or above, yeah. we would say, uh, my character decides to go be a farmer. <laughs> and we called it death by farming. <laughs> and then you would roll a new character. I love this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, but yeah, we usually, uh, the real way, yeah. That's the old school way. Okay. So let's roll. Okay. We're let's gonna see. go. We're let's gonna roll like death saves. Roll. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Now, if you roll a twenty, yep. you pop up with one hit point. You're good. Okay. You roll one, you lose two. Okay. But I'm already at zero hit points. You're at zero hit points, but you get three. Okay. So it's like, it's kind of like All a right. best out of three. Go ahead. Twenty. Damn. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I, I really roll. didn't expect you to roll a 20 because we're going to end the interview anyway. Okay, fine. <laughs> because they're telling me to rap over there. And that's a successful death save. Well, uh, we, we, we got to get together and play. Who do you play with out there? Oh, man. You know the big show from WWE? Of course. He just joined the group, Taron Killam from Saturday Night Live. Sure. He's in my home group. Vin Diesel plays. You ever play with Vin? I don't know if he does. He says he does. He does, but I don't know anybody that plays with him. And believe me, I would, hear that? I would Did know. Did you hear that? My house in L.A. is the L.A. hub, and all the writers, directors, comedians, mm -hmm. actors, we all started playing again. I'm coming out for the Emmys. Maybe, are you going to be out there in the end of September? Maybe we could play. Are you kidding? All right. Let's do it. <laughs> Death Saves is available for purchase now. Joe Manganiello, everybody. We'll be right back with Senator Cory Booker.